Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast with Kevin Harrington and Seth Green. Kevin Harrington is the inventor of the infomercial, one of the original sharks from the hit TV show Shark Tank, and has generated over $5 billion in TV and digital direct response sales. Seth Green is the world's first trusted authority on cutting edge direct response marketing, a best selling author, and the only three time Marketer of the Year nominee. On the podcast, Kevin and Seth interview sharkpreneurs who share straight talk on what it takes to explode your business. Why do so many businesses struggle while others seem to explode overnight? Do you wish you had the secret to this type of exponential growth? Now, I've scaled more than 20 businesses to over $100 million, and it's not just luck. In my new book with Mark Tim, Mentor to Millions, you'll learn the repeatable framework I use in all my business ventures for massive success. Order at KevinMentor.com and get over $1,000 in bonuses. Head to KevinMentor.com. Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast. This is Seth Green here with two-time guest Chuck Pettit of Republic.co. Chuck, welcome back. I'm uh, glad to be back, Seth. It's been... um maybe a year or so, but a, a weird year in between. It has definitely, it was definitely pre-COVID before when we did our first interview. Um, for our folks who didn't catch the first one, tell them a little bit about Republic, the future of private investing. Sure, we're a uh, investment crowdfunding platform that brings early, middle and late stage investment opportunities to retail investors around the world, um, across tech, crypto, video games, real estate, and small and medium-sized businesses. Okay, so let's narrow that down a little bit for <laughs> our folks. So what does that mean exactly? So, so I am, let's say there's two approaches, right? How to talk about it, how I can participate and benefit from this as an investor, and then we'll talk about how we can use it to raise capital as a business. Let's start with the investing side. So as an investor, um, most all investments that we bring to our platform are available to both accredited and non-accredited investors. Uh, we leverage the Regulation Crowdfunding Securities Exemption and Regulation A Plus Securities Exemptions. Uh, we also have Reg D Securities Exemption listings that are for accredited investors only, but like I said, the bulk of our offers are coming through Reg CF and Reg A. Um, again, that means you can be accredited or non-accredited. In many cases, you can make an investment as, as little as $50. Uh, most have a couple hundred dollar minimum minimum investment um, amount, but uh, that is the gist of it. Okay, so they I don't have to be an accredited investor. I can participate in companies before they hope to eventually go public or get acquired. Right. And these are earlier stage investments. Some of uh, and I'm hoping obviously to we're not making any investment recommendations on the show, but I'm hoping that I get in early enough that I get a small, a lower of enough valuation that when this thing hopefully takes off, I make a bunch of money. Exactly. And then you can find uh, different asset classes, different securities for different types of exposure for your, for your private portfolio. Um, I mentioned, you know, early stage, middle stage, late stage companies, growth stage companies, they're all available on Republic. Um, we're also seeing a lot of deals that are you know, equity or debt related, revenue share re related, cryptocurrency related. So optionality uh, is there for every investor at their fingertips um, to help, you know, find the next diamond in the rough, to diversify their portfolio, to get involved in something that they believe in, you know, to get involved in something that they want to see become the future tomorrow. That is fascinating. Can you, I pass performance, no guarantee of future success, of course, insert standard legal disclaimers here. Can you give us a couple examples of uh, of deals that came to fruition, they got funded, and then good things happened to them? Uh, sure. So we've had we've had several that were either you know acquired, um, went IPO, or other. Um, amazingly smooth process with the investors, even though they had in cases five hundred or even two thousand investors uh, per deal, anywhere from forty percent in returns up to. 2x in returns is what we've experienced so far. There are a couple on the horizon from the past uh, events and efforts of Republic that are looking more like in the 10 to 20x range. We'll see how those unfold over the next one to three months, but 
I'm sure some information and content will go out about those once they actually do come to fruition. We're at the very early stage of this. Um, from a baseball analogy, I would say we're in the top of the second inning of the investment crowdfunding you know, industry. Uh, seven full more innings, full more innings to go. So a lot of these things that we did two, three, four years ago are just getting to that point where they actually may have an exit. Uh, and then I'd say too, throw in like, we've had revenue share agreements that have returned three, five, and even 10 X um, on the revenue share. So that's primarily our video game investing vertical. Uh, you get into independent and video game developers, give them the money they need to help, you know, come up with the game or not come up with the game to actually develop the game and then sell it to, uh, to the marketplace. And they've been able to provide some pretty, pretty good returns to investors through our platform. Awesome. And then how did you get started? Republic or myself? Uh, let's, how did Republic get started? So Republic was a spin out from AngelList. AngelList is out of San Francisco. Uh, they're known as the, you know, the world's largest platform for accredited investors in the private space. When the 2012 Jobs Act uh, came together, one part of that act was called regulation crowdfunding. And that part of the law wasn't going to go effective until sometime in May of 2016. Um, with our you know, sites focused on that and the team that was spinning out of AngelList with proper funding from AngelList, we uh, timed the launch and our license with FINRA um, around that same time. May of 2016, we got the license, same time the law went effective, and then we actually launched with our first campaigns in June and July of 2016. I believe we actually had the first regulation crowdfunding campaign closed in December of 2016 out of the entire industry. So really there from the beginning, obviously. There all, all, all the way even to, you know, the most recent rule changes that were the first rule changes since that law went effective and first material rule changes since that law went effective in May of 2016 and a whole bunch of new ones came out in December of 2020. Uh, there were, I believe, 55 uh, sightings made by the SEC in that uh, rule release and we were 30 of those because we had spent a lot of time in Washington, D.C. with FINRA, with the SEC, with um, you know, the National Economic Council with Congress. We went and saw and talked to anyone that would listen about, you know, what this industry had been doing so far, um, where it was going, and how ultimately investors and founders could benefit from a couple of pretty easy rule changes. And now those are happening on March 15th of 2021. So good stuff on the horizon. That is, yeah, that is awesome, good stuff. And how many businesses have used your platform so far? Uh, a little over 300, but to put that in perspective, we will launch no less than 225 deals, I'd say, in 2021, realistically, probably 250 plus. Um, so almost doubling what we've done in the last four and a half years, just this year alone. Um, part of that is, that, you know, our, our processes are better, the product is better in both, you know, internally and externally for the company and for the investor, for the issuers and for the investors. A part of it is the market's really starting to come around on this idea of investment crowdfunding. Four years ago, we had major pockets of resistance with attorneys and boards and individual investors of the companies that we'd like to have move forward. We see a heck of a lot less of that today and, and partly because of the companies who did it before in Blaze Trails who had success raising capital who were seeing a crowd effect with their with a product or service that they were selling and literally selling hundreds of thousands and sometimes millions of dollars worth of those products and services just from the crowd exposure that they received from Republic. Um, we had a campaign yesterday uh, that raised a million dollars in roughly eight hours. Um, that is absolutely incredible. So, it's like yeah. the Kickstarter for crowdfunding. Uh, <laughs> the Kickstarter for crowd. Yep. I mean, uh, the the Kickstarter for investing. Kickstarter for investing. Sorry, um, so that segues to the next question. So, three hundred deals and over two two hundred and twenty projected for this year. So, obviously, you're experiencing some incredible growth. Uh, how about the investor side? How many investors have participated? So, between the companies that we've acquired, one was like I mentioned, the you know, I mentioned video games. We did acquire a video game investment platform, a real estate investment platform, the brick and mortar mom and pop investment platform. Those, those all happened, by the way, during COVID. Well, those are all post-March 2020 acquisitions um, to, to give you an idea of how busy we've been. But with those acquisitions included, plus our, our, our core user base at Republic, we have close to 1 million registered users. 
on the platform. That is absolutely incredible. You've obviously amassed a ton of data. What are you finding are, has, what are you finding are some of the biggest successes? What are some of the attributes, some of the factors that lead to a campaign on Republic being really successful? I can go a bunch of different ways. I'll try to just stick to two, but one thing that has to be recognized immediately by the founders, the issuers, the companies raising capital is that the vast majority of retail investors uh, are sophisticated. They do know what they're, they're doing and they are looking for a return on investment. You need to come to something, uh, you know, you, you need to come to the table of something attractive. You need to be a viable investment opportunity. Um, once you recognize that, once you come to the table with like, you know, proper growth and execution and uh, you know, traction, things that you've done that show the company has that chance of becoming the next big thing or it has viable return um, potential, you'll find yourself in a much better place um, every crowdfunding campaign you do. Uh, the other thing would be you want to hit the ground running. There are a few rules in place for regulation crowdfunding, not for regulation A, not for regulation D, but for regulation crowdfunding, you can't test the waters. That rule is going away come March 15th. People will be able to test the waters now legally. They can go out and tell the world, I'm going to run an investment crowdfunding campaign on Republic. And it's going to launch around this date. But until then, I want to know how you feel about me doing it. Would you give me an indication of if you'd invest or not? That will become wildly important. And I think people should be, you know, taking advantage of that early and often once the rule changes because they need to hit the ground running once the campaign is live and official and taking an investment. So getting out there and, you know, telling people your story, shouting from the, from the rooftops uh, without being shy or afraid of exposing yourself is the key to it. And testing the waters will allow people to do that in a much more efficient way. And then they'll be able to have a much more successful campaign and ultimately hit the ground running, which is key to any campaign being successful. Uh, the individual who raised the million dollars yesterday, they had pre-prepared, and you could do this, this isn't like testing the waters, you're talking to journalists, but they had pre-prepared a, a bunch of press and they had pre-prepared a, a social media strategy, They pre-prepared a strategy with their team internally and with the investors that were already invested in the company. Uh, they essentially hit the go button at the same time yesterday morning or yesterday afternoon. And, you know, it was all systems go. Now, not every campaign that does that is going to raise a million dollars in eight months, eight hours. Uh, there are other factors that come into play with that too, but it will certainly cause you to have a successful campaign. Um, if that momentum then is not enough for what you had in mind for the raise, you'll come into Republic's world of, you know, campaign strategy and marketing. We'll get you more exposure. We'll build more momentum. We'll get you more investors from our investor base as well. Uh, Your passion is obvious. What do you like best about what you do? Uh, I mean, it even goes back to when I first learned about Republic before it was, you know, a company was that it was a no brainer to me. It's like, Wow, you know, so you're saying to me that this law will allow anyone, virtually anyone to, from anywhere invest in private startups. And I had been investing as an angel, angel investor to that point for about eight or nine years. And it was hard and it was a mess. And if you joined an angel group, they weren't organized either. And you're telling me that this is going to be a te technology platform that's going to not only organize, but give access to tens of millions, if not really hundreds of millions of people around the world uh, to these deals. And I thought to myself, well, A, that's great as an investor, and B, that's amazing for founders because it is hard to raise capital. It's always hard to raise capital. I don't care if you're Steve Jobs, you probably had a hard, he probably had a hard time raising capital too in the, you know, the late 70s, early 80s for, for Apple. I know he did. I'm sure he had to go around town many times before he got those first checks. So having a, a more efficient and optimal process for founders at scale and for investors at scale. Awesome. You are advising founders um, and companies looking to raise capital every day. What would you say are some of the biggest challenges they run into? I mean, two things. One is the, 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 the distraction of a large check, meaning that a angel investor or a fund or an accelerator swoops in and says, we're going to give you a 250 cap. As soon as they hear that, they think, you know, why do I have to mess around with a bunch of two, $300 checks? I could just take the $250K check. Well, 
you're missing the, you know, the big point of it is that if you have 500, 1,000, 2,000 investors, having 1,800 investors is, is the average number of investments investors per campaign for us. It's much more powerful than taking one check for 250K. Um, and you're also going to raise more than 250K. So being able to concurrently raise, keeping this, you know, as part of your capital raise life cycle is super important. Awesome. For our folks who are watching or listening and want to learn more about how they might participate and invest or how they might raise money for their business, where is the best place for us to send them? To learn anything and everything Republic, just republic.co. Um, if you need to reach out to me personally, that's okay too. I'm Chuck at republic.co. Well, we greatly appreciate your time. What else do you want to share that I didn't think to ask you? And we've added these domain experts through acquisition. Like I said, um, we will be adding more. You know, having the ones we have now are great, but we, we want to actually give more optionality to our investor base. And that will include things like an energy vertical, a cannabis vertical, a music vertical. We'll be opening the doors to um, those three sometime in the next two to five months, hopefully. And then there'll be more after that as well. Uh, you can start seeing things like art or you can see things like healthcare, healthcare focused you know, verticals, et cetera. So it's exciting because the opportunities across the board will will, um, will increase substantially. So that's uh, that's really you know it's music to my ears because investors are going to be satisfied, and we have a lot of them that are ready, you know, ready and willing, and you know waiting to invest. And I can't wait to give them something that they're actually in need of. Awesome! This has been Seth Green for Sharkpreneur with Chuck Pettit of Republic.co. Chuck, thanks again for joining us. Thank you, Seth. I always appreciate it. Thanks everybody for watching or listening. We'll see you next time. Do you need money to fund your idea, product, or service? Are you ready to take your business to the next level but need capital to get it done? Kevin Harrington has heard more than 50,000 pitches and knows how to help you make the perfect pitch to get the funding for your entrepreneurial dream. He's distilled the process down in his perfect pitch cheat sheet and it's yours for free. Just text PITCH to him right now at 727-888-2100. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 right now and claim your free perfect pitch cheat sheet. Text pitch to 727-888-2100 to start funding your dream today. This show has been produced by Market Domination, LLC. To discover how you can have your own show completely done for you and turn it into a real published book and become the authority in your marketplace, go to www.marketdominationllc.com slash podcast offer.